The Capri was the fastback epitome of Ford's badge hierarchy scheme. In Mark III, guys, you could have everything from a 1.3 base spec Cameo to a 2A injection, but the holy grail has to be the Tickford turbocharged version like we've got here. One of 86 cars, this is number four. So who were Tickford? Well, Tickford was a coach building firm that was set up in the 1820s and they made bodies for all the major manufacturers. But in 1955, David Brown of Aston Martin bought the company and it lay dormant for several decades until 1981 when they set up Aston Martin Tickford, a specialist subsidiary to build custom cars like this Tickford Capri. They started off with the Tickford Metro, but the Capri came about when journalist John Miles sat down with Aston Martin's Victor Gauntlet and Ford to basically build the ultimate Capri. Now Tickford would go on to produce cars such as the road going version of the Sierra RS500 Cosworth, the MG Maestro Turbo, and in a later guise, the Racing Puma. But for this car, they really went to town. This is the car that kind of everyone sees as synonymous with Tickford. It had this incredible body kit designed by Simon Saunders, later the designer of the Aerial Atom. It still sat on the original wheels. This should actually be on pepper pot wheels rather than the seven spokes. Aston Martin Tickford badges on the A panels, the big spoiler on the back. Most of them were painted white, so it really had road presence. And at the front, you had an entirely new front end design. But that was all the cosmetic stuff. What we really want to know is what's under the bonnet and what does it drive like? So you'll have to excuse me on a day like today because it's uh, biblical rain and I'm driving a rear wheel drive with a big turbo strapped on it. And the 2AI, well that's sketchy enough on the best of times. So what Tickford did to this car was take the 2.8 Cologne injected V6 that was fitted for the 82 model year to the Capri and they put a big IHI turbo on the front of it with a Garrett intercooler. And that took power from around 150, 160 brake horsepower up to 205. And that meant 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds and a top speed of 137 miles an hour. Although I wouldn't want to try that today, or the 0 to 60. I think I'd end up in a hedge. To cope with that extra power, they made some tweaks. It's got Bilstein dampers all around, a ZF LSD and rear discs. So it's quite well balanced and it does hold on fairly well despite being on tiny 13 inch wheels and inside it's much nicer a point as well we've got a bit of a wood veneer dash a boost gauge yeah, boy. <laughs> and you did have the option of the recaros being trimmed in leather although these ones are cloth and you could have a nice wool headlining as well whoa there you go slipper rip just away from the lights, just a little tiny poke of it and it's ready to kill me. Now originally Tickford planned to make 250 of these but they only ended up making 86. Ford pulled out of the project in around mid 83 and then stopped marketing the car altogether in 1984 which wouldn't have helped. But the main problem was the car was almost 15,000 pounds which was about three times the price of a normal 2AI. That would have bought you something like a Porsche 944 or BMW E24. And of course, Ford also brought out the Sierra RS Cosworth, which kind of rendered a turbocharged Capri obsolete. And then there were hot hatches. You know, suddenly the idea of a turbocharged Capri at 15 grand couldn't hold the same sway it had when John Miles first came up with the concept. That's a bit of a shame, but now a Tickford Capri is an absolute hero car. I love a Capri and a Tickford with its crazy body kit, plush interior and turbocharged cologne motor. It's just a thing to behold. I'm a little bit in love. The only problem is I need it on a day where it's not soaking wet and I'm going to put it sideways because this car, this thing will break away at the merest prod of the throttle. You really do need to have your wits about you. Well, I think you could spin this car in a straight line. It's quite laggy at low speeds and when you boot it and the turbo kicks in it doesn't half kick in but that's all just part of the 80s turbocharged car experience it doesn't really drive quite like a capri that i remember you, the turning is actually very good on the corners but in these conditions if you were to floor it mid-bend it is going to spit you out the other side sideways 
but oh, it's glorious and it makes an absolutely glorious noise. Whoop! <laughs> Slipping away just from the lights there. The Tickford Capri wasn't a massive success, but somehow that just doesn't matter. For me, it's the holy grail of Capris, the top of the tree. I love Mark III's anyway, but a Tickford, oh, it's the poster boy. They say you shouldn't meet your heroes, and I haven't met mine in ideal circumstances, but this car is great. I love it. It's flawed, and I could probably go quicker in a new Fiesta ST, but that just doesn't matter. It pops and bangs a bit. It slides all over the place. <laughs> wow.